Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today we'll be looking at a Raspberry Pi 4 starter kit that includes just about everything you need to turn your Raspberry Pi 4 into a retro gaming console or a mini PC. So these nice kits are made by a company called Labis, and you can find these kits on Amazon for right around $105. And these kits come with pretty much everything you need to get your Raspberry Pi 4 set up and going, including the Raspberry Pi 4 4GB model, a fan and HDMI cable, a case for the Raspberry Pi 4, heat sinks, a micro SD card, a micro SD card reader, and a few more things. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a closer look. Right on the top here is going to be the Raspberry Pi 4 computer, and this is the 4GB model. So this is the most RAM that is currently available for the Raspberry Pi 4. The Pi 4 is a pretty big step up from their previous model, which would have been the Raspberry Pi 3 B+. The Pi 4 comes with stock CPU speeds of 1.5GHz, but you can raise that clock speed all the way to 2GHz to get better performance. Currently, right now, there is no official RetroPi software available for the Raspberry Pi 4 but it is in the works and we will soon see it. But for right now, we can use some software called Laka that works great for retro gaming emulation. And what Laka basically is, is an operating system that uses a Linux distribution of the RetroArch front end for emulation purposes. And if you're not looking to use that Raspberry Pi 4 to play some video games, you can always install the Raspbian operating system to use your Raspberry Pi 4 just like in a little mini desktop or mini PC. Now it's time to see what else we got inside the box. Here is the micro HDMI cable. So one side of this is micro, then the other side is standard. Here is the USB power supply. This is five volt, three amps. And it does have the USB-C plug there. And it has a toggle switch on it, so you can turn that Raspberry Pi 4 off and on. But I would highly recommend to shut down your Raspberry Pi 4 through the software first before using the toggle switch. And this is the Pi 4 case. And this is a super simple case to assemble. It's just a couple pieces and it actually just presses together. There is a couple different screws, but that's actually for the fan. The case itself doesn't require any screws. And this is a straightforward case. There's not a lot of bells and whistles with this. It gives you access to all your ports, including that micro SD card. And that's really all you need. The case breaks down into three different pieces that you can just snap and press together. And this is the fan that comes with it. And that does mount to the top part of the case using four different screws. And here's some heat sinks. There's three of those that mount to the top of the Raspberry Pi 4. And here is a micro SD card reader. And this can either plug into a standard USB slot or a USB-C slot. And it also comes with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card that is pre-installed with new software. And this will allow you to install the Raspbian desktop if you choose to, or you can simply just write over this SD card with whatever software you choose to. Okay, let's go ahead and assemble the case now, and we'll start with the heat sinks. We got three different ones, and they'll go in a specific location. So we'll start with this one right here. We'll take the adhesive backing off of it, and that's going to go in this location right here. Now we're going to grab the next one. This is kind of a copper colored one, and that'll go on the main CPU. Now we're going to grab that smallest one. And that's going to go in this location right here. Now we got the heat sinks all done. Now let's move on to the next step. So now we're going to slide our Raspberry Pi 4 into the bottom part of the case. And there's going to be two tabs that's going to slide under on the left side right there. We got two black tabs and it just slides underneath those. Now we're going to grab the middle part of the case and that's going to line up with all your portholes and then snap together. So once you get those lined up, go ahead and push firmly down and it should snap together. Now it's time to attach the fan to the top of the case. Now this is not required, but I would recommend it because the Raspberry Pi 4s do get pretty hot. So this will help keep it nice and cool along with those heat sinks. And the fan's very simple to install. It comes with four different bolts and nuts. And I'll go ahead and put those bolts in the holes first, then hold those with my finger in place, then slide the fan over those bolts, then start attaching the nuts. And the tight nose, I'm going to use a screwdriver and just my hand on the back side to hold the nut in place. And you don't have to get carried away as you're tightening it, just get it nice and snug. Now it's time to plug in the fan, and that will plug into the GPIO pins located right here. And let's go ahead and take a closer look. Right where the two yellow circles are is where that clip's going to plug in. 
with that red wire being farthest to the left. And that's it, we're done. Now we just need to put the lid on and that just presses in place. Now the lid doesn't press all the way down and that's done on purpose to give you a little ventilation gap. So you can see a gap there at the top and that's to give it better ventilation. So as I was saying earlier, this is a very straightforward and simplistic case. You get access to all your portholes and you can easily access inside the case because that lid just presses together and it removes easily anytime you wanna get inside the case. So even though this case is simplistic, it does still have a lot going on. You got that fan to keep it cool, you got your heat sinks, you got access to all those portholes, and you got that toggle switch where you can actually kill the power to the Pi 4. Now a couple things this kit does not come with is a video game controller that's either USB or Bluetooth powered, and a keyboard. Those are both something you're probably gonna need if you wanna do some retro gaming emulation. And something else I would like to mention, if you want to store your game ROMs on a portable device such as a USB 3.0 hard drive, you can. Currently right now I do have mine plugged into the USB 2.0 slot just for testing purposes, but you will get better performance plugging into the USB 3.0 with a 3.0 capable device. For my current operating system, I'm using the latest version of Laka, which is now a stable build. Previously we were having issues with audio stutter and some other glitches, and now I'd say the emulation is pretty stable, and I'd say it's a big improvement over the previous Raspberry Pi 3B+. Especially if you raise that clock speed to 2 GHz, you start seeing some very noticeable differences. With my current setup, I can now play a lot of N64 and Dreamcast games at full speed, and even some 2D Sega Saturn games. And I will have another video coming up here very soon, showing off some of my emulation results with my current setup. Okay, it's time for me to get out of here. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time.